Have you ever had one of those annoying eye twitches that keep coming back? What are those? And why do we get them? In this episode of Aki Talk, Dr. Amanda Scalise will be telling us all about myokemia, why we get it, and how we can try to avoid it in the future. Dr. Scalise? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of Aki Talk. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of Aki Talk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us, Dr. Amanda Scalise. Dr. Scalise, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to visit with us, Dr. Scalise. Uh, before we get started, uh, I was hoping that maybe you can introduce yourself to our audience, uh, let them know a little bit about your background and your specialty. Sure. So I am Dr. Amanda Scalise. I am from upstate New York and I now practice in upstate New York. I am a partner in a multi-location group practice. Um, I do mainly primary eye care with an emphasis on dry eye, glaucoma, and I do do a little bit of myopia management as well. Well, excellent. Thank you for that introduction, Dr. Scalise. And uh, for our discussion today, we were hoping that maybe you could talk to us a little bit about eyelid twitching or uh, myokemia. Uh, what is myokemia? Yeah, so myokemia is just the fancy word for eyelid twitch. It's that annoying, uncontrollable spasm of the eyelid, uh, usually from a spontaneous contraction of the eyelid muscle, usually the orbicularis oculi muscle. Um, it's usually unilateral, so it affects one eye at a time. Um, it can affect both the upper and lower lid, uh, but usually the lower lid's more common. Um, and it's very, so it can be barely noticeable to very bothersome, depending on the person. <laughs> well, excellent. Thank you for that explanation, Dr. Scalise. And uh... What causes this eyelid twitching? So while the exact cause isn't really known, there are certain things that can trigger it. So extra stress, lack of sleep, extra caffeine. Um, there's some nutritional things that can cause it like low magnesium, um, alcohol, tobacco use, and then like eye strain, irritation, um, things like dry eye, eye allergies, and other stuff like that. Uh, well, perfect. Thank you for that explanation, Dr. Scalise. And I wanted to ask, how common is this? And is it more common in adults or do children get it as well? Um, so it's very common. Most of us will experience it at some point in our lives. Um, and I do find that more mostly adults deal with that more than children. Oh, well, perfect. Thank you again for that explanation, Dr. Scalise. And uh, how long does it usually last? I know some people probably get it for a little bit and then it goes away, but how, how long does it typically last for somebody? Um, so it's usually pretty t transient. It usually only lasts maybe 10 minutes or so. Um, it can occur once a day or more than once in a day, uh, but it's usually self-limiting. So it can last anywhere from a few days, maybe to a few weeks, maybe to a few months. I will definitely, hopefully it doesn't last for a few weeks. Uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully it only lasts for 10 minutes, not a few weeks. <laughs> but thank you for that explanation, Dr. Scalise. Um, and what are the different treatment options that are available for this? So treatment options eliminate the possible causes because um, it usually is just self-limiting. So, you know, less caffeine, get more sleep, keep your eyes lubricated. Um, but if it does persist and it starts to affect with your daily activities and stuff like that, um, they do do Botox injections um, that can offer relief for it. Um, and then severe cases, there is a surgery to remove the muscles of the eyelid called a myectomy. Oh, wow. I didn't know that Botox and uh, surgery were involved, but that's pretty amazing information. Thank you, Dr. Scalise. Um, and could this be a sign of something more serious? So usually it's just an annoyance and not really a cause for concern. Um, but if it does present with other symptoms, um, it could be a sign of a neurological condition like myasthenia gravis, um, MS, Parkinson's, um, stuff like that. Oh, wow. Oh, well, excellent information. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Scalise. Um, and is there anything you could do? I know you said it earlier, uh, probably you know, less ca caffeine drinking but um, and other, other things like that. But is there anything that we can do to help prevent um, this eyelid twitching? Yes. Aim for that low stress, healthy lifestyle. <laughs> so good, good nutrition, regular exercise, stuff like that. Uh, well, perfect. You heard it from Dr. Scalise. Uh, healthy exercise, uh, less stress. Hopefully everyone can uh, definitely do that. Thank you, Dr. Scalise. Um, and so when should someone consult their doctor? Like if, it, if it's happening longer than 10 minutes or when, when should we be able to go see Dr. Scalise with what's going on with our eyelids? 
Yeah, so you should definitely consult with your doctor if it does persist past that few weeks, few months type of thing. Um, if complete eyelid closure happens where both eyes are closing and it's difficult to open, that could actually be something different called a blepharospasm. Um, and then if twitching occurs to more other parts of like your face, that could be a hemifacial spasm. So there's a few different type of kind of spasms you can have. Um, also too, if the eyelids start to droop or if your eyeball itself just starts to get red or it's leaking any type of discharge, stuff like that, definitely consult with your eye doctor. Well, again, everyone, that was Dr. Amanda Scalise. Dr. Scalise, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much.